Hello everyone, this is Ms. Lina Aude and this is a grade 10 English. Uh, today I will be introducing unit number one, which is called Inside the Nightmare. So let's delve deeply into understanding the unit. Uh, a primary intellectual question is what can you comprehend from the unit title Inside the Nightmare? Some sub questions Are dreams meaningless? Are dreams rele relevant to our waking lives? What are nightmares? Do you agree? Do you disagree? The Freudian theory of dreams explains how dreams reveal hidden emotions and desires. Have you ever wished for a nightmare to come true and why? The video that is to be watched that will explain a nightmare is this one. The unit description goes as follows. The various yet intertwined individualistic feelings of the term fear, scared, excited and contented. We willingly celebrate Halloween. We buy tickets to be a part of the scary experience in a haunted house, or we might even read the stories that keep us up all night startled by every strange noise we hear. Surprisingly, we put ourselves through fear and suspense and take such pleasure from enduring the horrific experiences of anxiety, heavy breathing and sweating. In this essay, essay five reasons we enjoy being scared, Dwyer argues. Fear refers to an emotion or feeling induced by perceived danger or threat of danger, which yields a physiological change that subsequently evokes a behavior response. Fight, flight, or freeze. Nothing about this description implies fun or pleasure. So think of it. A pounding heartbeat, heavy breathing, a cold sweat, butterflies in your stomach. These do not sound like particularly nice experiences, but we endure them when we feel fear. But why do so many people like to be scared, in other words, to feel fear? This brings us to the question, what is the allure of fear? The allure of fear is a powerful attraction. Similarly, the concept of scary but fun appeals to many of us. This unit reflects upon the Gothic literature as will allow you to explore many interesting Gothic genres written by writers who hold key answers to what draws us to explore and to enjoy frightening themes. In addition, you will learn about how writers are free from restraints and rules. Characters simultaneously admire and despise the sense of fear and how they have psychological desire to escape from unpleasant realities. What is Gothic literature since it's a key element to understand? It's a genre of literature that combines horror, death and sometimes romance. Gothic literature often has a strong willed protagonist that are in isolated fearful settings and there are usually elements of sublime nature and supernatural fearful specters. This type of fiction is designed to make us as readers feel a strong sense of foreboding. So what are the key elements or the main elements of gothic literature? It's a, a haunted setting. It's a major key element in the gothic literature as we open it is usually opens uh, in old castles, uh, in mansions, in abandoned houses, uh, the purpose is to add some scariness. Second of all, the dark and the mysterious atmosphere, as this one over here also adds a mystery, uh, it prevails over the Gothic literature because it's a key motif in Gothic fiction. This plot might include characters or even inanimate objects have the tendency to disappear, so the door opens and then closes as a, a form of a threshold, and so on. Uh, affiliation with supernatural forces, for this one over here we might have some ghosts, some vampires, some giants, some monsters, some demons, and so on. As for the emotional extremes, you might see people who are extremely scared, and see people who are extremely sob who are sobbing, some people who are screaming, and people who might be, uh, say, merely happy for absolutely no reason. The protagonist as anti-hero, another key element of the Gothic fiction is to display the protagonist, mostly a male character, as an anti-hero. He's the main focus of the story, yet at the same time we see him as the monstrous face of the story. It might be a facade, it might be something you have to uh, understand on your own. Women as victims, in Gothic fictions, we see that the female protagonist is always in trouble, which is no doubt another one of the major elements of the Gothic literature. Curses, 
This one over here, uh, the prophecies play a major role in Gothic literature as it is full of superstitious ideas. Visions and nightmares, uh, again, it goes hand in hand with our topic because it uh, demonstrates hallucinations uh, for uh, our characters. Frightening tone, you might find it dark, frightening, and foreboding tone. As for hostility of weather, it might be raining, you know the, how the symbols go, it might be foggy, and so on. For the religious concerns, uh, this one over here, you might find someone who's extremely religious, because mainly the Gothic areas were uh, Christian areas, or they were uh, originally some kind of cathedrals, so you will find them mostly in convents, religious life, monks, nuns, so on. Psychological instability for the narrator himself. He might not know the name of the narrator. He would be unnamed. He might be untrusted. A lot of things. Good versus evil. Most of the time you're going to find good versus evil. Well, we, will not, we might not see who wins it. The touch of romance, of course, uh, although we, you don't find it much, but it might be there because it's influenced by the Romanticism era. Now, the historical integration of a brief history of the Goths the main focus is the Roman Empire, the Classical Age, the Goths, the Middle Ages, the Renaissance, the Age of Enlightenment, Romanticism, and Dark Romanticism. Material to be covered in this unit is Literature, How it's Taken Over, it's a short story, From the Dream Collector, it's Media, Poem, Beware, Grammar, Subject Verb Agreement, and Subject Complements, Writing, Argumentative Essays, reading uh, comprehension texts, speaking, public speaking, listening audios, quizzes, and videos. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you understood.